Hello and welcome to Wednesday Worship. I am Mark Pratton from Nana Methodist Church, a part of the Falmouth and Gwennep Methodist Circuit. We are continuing through this season of Lent. Today we are looking at the well-known hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Ride on, ride on in majesty, which focuses on the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem not long before his betrayal, arrest and crucifixion. This story from the Bible is taken from all four Gospels, including Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 17. So what do we know about the author? Well, he was Henry Hart Millman a doctor of divinity, divinity, who was the youngest son of Sir Francis Milman, who was physician to the king. Henry was born in 1791 and educated at Greenwich and Eton. Throughout his varied life, he was a playwright, a professor of poetry, a historian, a theologian, a churchman, and a hymn writer, and he was successful in all these areas. He has 13 hymns published in all. He graduated from Oxford in 1816 and by 1823 had written three popular plays with religious themes. He was appointed Professor of Poetry at Oxford but turned then to the study of church history. He was ordained in 1817 and Milman served in churches in Reading and London. His most illustrious church appointment was that of Dean of St Paul's Cathedral, a position he held for 19 years until his death in 1868. As we look at the words of the hymn, the text unites meekness and majesty, sacrifice and conquest, suffering and glory, all central to the gospel for Palm Sunday. Each stanza begins with ride on, ride on in majesty, Majesty is the text's theme, as the writer helps us to experience the combination of victory and tragedy that characterises the triumphal entry. It was described by the composer Stanley Osborne as objective, robust, confident and stirring. It possesses the peculiar combination of tragedy and victory which draws the singer into the very centre of the drama. It is this which gives the hymn its power and its challenge. The hymn did indeed prove pop popular. In 1907, John Julian, in his Dictionary of Hymnology, stated it was the most popular Palm Sunday hymn in the English language at that time. Returning to the passage. On that day of the triumphal entry, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a borrowed donkey's colt one that had never been written before. The disciples spread their cloaks on the donkey for Jesus to sit on, and the multitudes came out to welcome him, laying before him their cloaks and branches of palm trees. The people hailed and praised him as the King who comes in the name of the Lord. As he rode to the temple, where he taught the people, he healed them, and he drove out the money changers and merchants who had made his father's house a den of robbers. Jesus' purpose in riding into Jerusalem was to make public his claim to be their Messiah and King of Israel in fulfilment of Old Testament prophecy. Matthew says that the king coming on the foal of the donkey was an exact fulfilment of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus rides into the city as a conquering king 
and is hailed by the people. The streets of Jerusalem, the royal city, are open to him, and like a king he ascends to his palace, not a temporal palace, but the spiritual palace that is the temple, because his is a spiritual kingdom. He receives the worship and praise of the people, because only he deserves it. No longer does he tell his disciples to be quiet about him, but to shout his praises and to worship him openly. The spreading of cloaks was an act of homage for royalty. Jesus was openly declaring to the people that he was their king and the Messiah they'd been waiting for. However, the praise the people lavished on Jesus was not because they recognised him as their saviour from sin. They welcomed him out of their desire for a deliverer, someone who would lead them in a revolt against Rome. There were many who, though they did not believe in Christ as saviour, nevertheless hoped that perhaps he would be, to them, a great hero and rescuer of Roman oppression. These are the ones who hailed him as king with their hosannas, recognising him as the son of David, who came in the name of the Lord. But when he failed in their expectations, when he refused to lead them in a massive revolt against the Roman occupiers, the crowds quickly turned on him, and within just a few days their hosannas were changed to cries of crucify him. Those who hailed him as a hero would soon reject and abandon him. The story of the triumphal entry is one of contrasts, and those contrasts contain applications for us as followers of Jesus. It is the story of the king who came as a lowly servant on a donkey, not a prancing stallion, not in royal robes, but on the clothes of the poor and humble. Jesus Christ comes not to conquer by force, as earthly kings, but by love, grace, mercy, and his own sacrifice for his people. His is not a kingdom of armies and splendour, but of lowliness and servanthood. He conquers not nations, but hearts and minds. His message is one of peace with God, not a temporary peace. If Jesus has made a triumphal entry into our own hearts, he reigns there in peace and love. And as his followers, may we exhibit those same qualities so that the world will see a true king living and reigning in triumph in us. Shall we pray? Dear God, meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God. Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility and washes our feet. Lord, we thank you for who you are, for your example to us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your obedience and your sacrifice in order that we might have relationship with you. Pray that you be with us, continue to be with us through this season of Lent and we would honour you with all we are. In Jesus' name. Amen.